For today's EMN5, we're going to talk about the types of shock, and there's specifically four categories that we're going to talk about. So the first is hypovolemic. This is the one we think about a lot in the ER. This can be from hemorrhage, maybe from a trauma, vaginal bleeding, or just general fluid losses or being just intravascularly dry, maybe vomiting a lot, GI losses, just a low circulating volume. Now let's look at the effects that that has. That basically means that your preload to start with is low, and that's going to affect everything else. Your pump function is going to be low. You might actually have a response to increase your SVR after load, and your perfusion in general is going to be down. Now the next kind we're going to talk about is cardiogenic, and this means a poor pump function, meaning directly from the heart. Um, this can be caused from arrhythmias, a massive MI, valve failure, or cardiomyopathy, pericarditis, any of these things that will affect your pump function. So like we just said, pump function or cardiac output is the main thing affected. That's going to be lowered. Um, that means that you might have a little bit of backup in your preload, and you might have a compensatory increase in your SVR and generally low perfusion. The next kind is distributive shock. This is the kind we think about a lot. This is the vasodilatory shock that involves a very low systemic vascular resistance. In the ER, we're thinking about septic shock. Anybody who has SERS criteria or maybe even toxic shock syndrome can have this uh, vasodilatory shock. Anybody having anaphylaxis, uh, maybe a trauma patient with neurogenic shock, meaning an injury to the spinal cord um, that then causes just massive dilation, um, and you end up with distributive shock. A drug or toxins can cause this, um, or also add in sodium crisis. So like we said, this is a problem with your afterload, meaning the systemic vascular resistance is going to be decreased. To compensate for this, you end up with an increase in the pump function. That's why your septic patients probably are tachycardic, uh, their heart's pumping really fast trying to make up for it. Now obstructive is probably the hardest one to remember. This is where you have an extra cardiac obstruction to your blood flow. So your heart's working fine, but it's pumping and pumping and it can't really move the blood forward. Things to think about here are tension pneumothorax, tamponade, or a PE. Here we're going to see an increase in the preload because your heart's pushing and pushing and can't really move the blood forward. So you might see um, an elevated JVP, for example, and your pump function in general is going to be down. Now let's talk about treatments for each of these. So for our hypovolemic patient, what do you think they need? They need volume, right? They need fluids, whether that's normal saline or red blood cells. They need more volume in order to replete uh, their intravascular volume loss. What about these patients who have the poor pump function, so a cardiogenic shock? Good, so their treatment is going to be inotrope. Specifically, dobutamine is a great thing to start with in the ER. Now, what about our distributive shock patients? So these, again, this is, remember, your septic shock, anaphylaxis. Good, these are the patients that you would probably consider starting your pressors on. Again, you're going to be giving them fluids as well to make sure that you get them back, you know, topped off, but they might need something more than that. In septic patients, our first go-to is probably norepinephrine. Uh, anaphylaxis, what do we think of there? Epi, good. Um, in neurogenic shock patients, either phenylephrine or possibly norepinephrine is going to be your go-to. And then you can also try dopamine. Now lastly, we have the obstructive shock. So if it's a patient who has a pericardial fusion, for example, and has tamponade, what do you need to do? A pericardiosynthesis. So this is the type of patients you're either going to be doing a procedure on or calling for help either from surgeons or your cath lab. So just to review, the four types of shock are hypovolemic, that's a low circulating volume. You have cardiogenic shock where your pump function is very poor. You have distributive shock. This is the one we think about a lot in the ER, vasodilatory, your low systemic vascular resistance. This is your sepsis, anaphylaxis, neurogenic. And then lastly, we have obstructive, which is where you have the extra cardiac obstruction to blood flow, like PE and tamponade. Here are the references, and thanks for joining us on EMN5.